Good afternoon, viewers. I'm welcoming you to the second panel in Women in Governance and Politics Conference 2020. And I have my panelists today. We're starting with Toun Sodaya from Lagos. She's joining us virtually. Hello, Toun. Can you hear me? Hi, I can hear you. You're welcome. Good to have you here. And second on our panel, I have Indy Kato. Indy Kato is the executive director of Didi Dari Foundation. Welcome, Indy. Thank you for having me. And we have Lois Auta. Lois Auta is a human rights advocate who, with over 10 years of experience in disability rights advocacy here in Nigeria. Welcome, Lois. Thank you so much. OK, to start our conversation proper, I would like to go back to what the minister said in her welcoming address. She made mention that there had been several attempts in Nigeria to amend the constitution to suit different groups of people from women to children and people living with disability. And to give a background of what we'll be discussing on this panel, section 26 of the 1999 constitution provides that the president may confer Nigerian citizenship on any woman who has been married to a citizen of Nigeria. Therefore, women cannot transfer Nigerian citizenship to their spouses. And under the Labor Act, a woman who is engaged in manual labor cannot be employed on night work in a public or any agricultural undertaking. And again, under the Labor Act, women are prevented from engaging in any underground work in any time. So in the Police Act, we have married women are prevented from seeking enlistment in the Nigerian police force. And again, when an unmarried woman is pregnant, she would be discharged from the police force. She can only be reinstated on the approval of the Inspector General of Police. Under the NDLEA order of 2002, all female applicants shall be unmarried at the point of entry and shall open enlistment remain unmarried for a period of not less than two years. The same NDLA order stated that all unmarried female members of staff that wish to marry shall, appear, shall apply in writing to the chairman, chief executive of the NDA, asking for permission to be asking for permission, stating details also of the intended husband. So I'm going to start um, with Tone. Tone, are you still there? I'm very okay. here with you. I Tone, am with you. how can media serve as a catalyst for equal rights and opportunities for women? And media here goes from TV, radio to movies. Thank you very much for this opportunity. So um, the portrayal of women in the media, um, in Nigeria media, like we have globally, can be said to be um, one of the factors that, uh, in my opinion, do not promote the equal opportunities for women. Um, for instance, we know how the media put the spotlight on men in their various um, fields of businesses and uh, career, especially our politicians. On the contrary, um, the reportage and uh, coverage of women in all areas, especially women in politics, is very discouraging. Um, where the women are featured, in instances where we have uh, women featured, the competency, their capability is usually eroded. And so we see the media focusing on their personal life, um, whether they have four husbands or whether they have, um, they're have they not married. And uh, we have instances of uh, male politicians who sometimes have six wives and 30 children and nobody focuses on that. So I feel that the media has really not done much. Um, I was looking through, I was reading through um, um, a data from Global Media uh, Monitoring Project is that the female gender only make up 24% of news. So the persons heard, uh, the persons we read about or seen in newspapers, television and radio news, only 24% make up uh, the female. 46% of news stories reinforce gender stereotypes. 
and you know, four percent of stories clearly challenge uh, gender uh, stereotypes. So, if um, if you you look at the statistics, you will agree with me that we need the media to play its powerful role to achieve equal rights and opportunities in Nigeria, to ensure that the media um, plays this important role. Uh, there is a need for um, a conscious, a deliberate and intentional effort by all. It cannot happen by mere coincidence. We must be intentional. We need the media, traditional, like you said, um, and new media to create gender sensitive, gender um, transformative content. We need to use the media to challenge uh, negative traditional and uh, cultural norms and attitudes. We need to feature more women in the media on a daily basis as a norm, not uh, 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 in exceptional circumstances. On prime time, let's have the same number of women as a men in analyzing and discussing topical uh, issues. When I say deliberate, it means we need to dedicate a greater part of our content and to promoting women's rights. So, for instance, um, if you have 10 programs, five should uh, 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 mainstream women's issues, opportunities and rights. Uh, during the last elections, 2018, 2019, we had to appeal, we had to beg, we had to solicit for a lot of the media houses, national media houses, to feature the women uh, on their on their radio, on their radio, on TV stations and newspapers. Why? Because they don't have the kind of financial money that the men have. So we need to put gender on everyone's agenda. We need to do that. That is the job of every Nigerian media. If we're talking about true democracy, if we're talking about equal opportunities, let's put gender on our national agenda. Thank you, Tohun, for that. And as a media entrepreneur and a radio broadcaster, I know your station, which is the first female radio we have in Nigeria, uh, which is WFM 9.17, 91.7, has been quite deliberate in pushing Northern voices and creating a platform for Northern women. How well did the strategy work with the conversation on SGBV, and can you suggest how this can be adapted in crafting a new narrative towards equal rights and opportunities for Nigerian women? So, um, on in March, uh, we've we've been engaging a few um, Northern women, Ndi Kato being one of them, um, 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 on the radio station. But sometime around, I think January, we 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 had a kind of um, formal engagement with. Um, with a, a few of our northern uh, female counterparts, and they raised a lot of issues. A lot of issues about their voices being silenced. You know, we talk about uh, breaking the silence culture in, in in southern Nigeria. In northern Nigeria, it is it is really bad. And so, yes, women radio is very deliberate when it comes to women matters. We have no choice because our mandate as the women radio is female centric, and this is why we always say we are unapologetic. So the issue of uh, sexual gender based violence, and particularly us taking it to northern Nigeria, was born out of requests and engagements with our female counterparts, as I said. So we set up Moria Mata Initiative, the voice of women in northern Nigeria. Uh, within a short period of time, you know, we've been able to address issues of uh, SG, S SGB. I think the, the reason why this worked is because, yes, it is an initiative of WFM 91.7, it's an initiative of Women Radio. The drivers of Muria Mata are Northern women themselves who understand their peculiar challenges and, and the platform is being used well. Um, to amplify their voices, though the results may not be um, uh, may not be seen very well now. It may not be evident, but gradually we're breaking, we're helping, we're working with them to break the culture of silence in northern Nigeria. I'll give you a classic um, example from all the programs we have done, um, physical and uh, on radio. Um, and then through the webinar, we have been able, Moria Mata has been able to profile rapists. So they 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 they, they spoke to um, I think well over seventy um, uh, stakeholders, uh, victims of uh, victims and survivors of uh, rape, sexual based uh, sex, rape and sexual gender based violence. Um, they spoke. We spoke to perpetrators and rapists. We spoke to the police. 
we spoke to CSOs, we spoke to quite a number of people, and we were able, we spoke to children who have been abused, and then we were able to profile a rapist. And so what Maria Mata is doing, um, we're talking to the Ministry of Women Affairs, um, uh, uh, we're talking to the Ministry of Education and Information, for us, especially education, to go into primary schools across the 774 local governments of Nigeria and, and profile a potential rapist to to a, to a primary school student. So in ten in five years time, at least when we do this, we know that we're securing and putting um, 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 security mechanisms in place um, for the children. We need them to know that everybody is a potential rapist. You know, every man, every woman is a potential rapist. The teacher is a potential rapist. The pastor who tells the child or the woman come to my office to pray for you is a potential rapist. Thank the you so much for that. Please stay connected, we'll get back to you. And I have a uh, co panelist joining me from Lagos, Honorable Ihoma. Honorable Ihoma is the National Deputy Woman Leader of the All Progressive Congress. Good afternoon, Ma. Good afternoon. Good to have you here. As the Deputy Woman Leader of a political party, how can we mainstream conversations around women participation as well as women's rights in party constitution and manifestos? And how can we leverage on the seat of the woman leader to win more support? Thank you so much for having me. I want to say a big thank you to the National Assembly men and women, at least for even coming on board for constitutional amendments. I think this is a good time for it. Women participation in, po in, in politics, I mean, is enormous. Our women do all the mobilization. They do all the work. But when it gets to reward, the women are forgotten. Just uh, recently, the women leaders of our Progressive Congress held a workshop. And in that workshop, we decided to look at ways especially amendments. And so I'm going to take it from the national, from the amendment we want to do in our constitution. And that's what I want to call our men, especially in the National Assembly, to begin to drive this narrative, to begin to drive this discourse, to begin to engage themselves, to find a way you know, to amend our constitution that women will be more visible. Women carry a lot of potentials. And these potentials, they must bring it on board. They must bring it to the fore in a way that is going to affect even our economy. Our women have really done a lot. And I was just looking at what happens in other clients. And I, 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 I saw that in Rwanda here, that the women in parliament are more than men. You have 64 women against 36 men in their parliament. You can imagine the kind of thing that will happen there, that women problems will be brought to the fore and laws will be promulgated that will affect the lives of these women positively. And you know that if women are allowed to drive our economy, there will be changes. There will be transformation. And so the women in politics are doing so much. They need equal opportunities with the men. They need a level playing ground. They carry all it takes to be who they will be, you know, to, to effect positively to the things that has to do with our nation. So the women are ready and women are working, but all we're doing is asking that the men, our men should give the women equal opportunities. Like Tone said, that gender should become the agenda. In every forum, wherever men are, they should begin to talk about their sisters, their mothers, their daughters, and these are people who are ready to, you know, contribute their quota in the runnings of our economy. 
In Croatia, a woman became a president. She ran from 2015 to 2020. And she did quite a lot. And she had the support of men. I think in Nigeria, we should begin to take in words. Yes, our constitution says freedom from discrimination. But are women not being discriminated in Nigeria? I think we need to change the narrative. Women are doing a lot in party politics. Women are ready in the process, process of picking up who should be a candidate. The women are skimmed out. You mentioned how many women we have in the Senate and in the House of Representatives. Extremely poor. It's as if there's no woman there. And you know that women understand themselves. It will take a woman to understand another woman. And so they shall, there should be a platform for these women to participate from the process of who should be who to the person who becomes. Women should be given equal opportunity. And as a matter of fact, I told you about the workshop we just had. We looked at the area of principle of twinism. Principle of twinism works in a way that if a man becomes the president, auto Okay, sorry about that. We are going back to Towun now. So we have her last thoughts on the importance of media and the portrayal of women politicians. Towun, please, are you there? I'm here, yes, I'm here. So with the current state of media operations in Nigeria, do you think that they are fair in their portrayal, especially of women candidates when it comes to elections? I mean, as I, as I thank you very much. As I said earlier, I, 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 the Nigerian media has not been fair at all. We have to be, you know, the reason why um, uh, Denedari is bringing this on with the support of uh, those who are supporting is for us to be very real and, 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 and uh, be sincere. The Nigerian media has not has not done much for women, especially our women in politics, because we're working towards 2023. Nigerian media just needs to, 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 to be deliberate. You know, I cannot but say this. We need to be deliberate. We need to be intentional in everything we are doing. Now, as I said, we understand that women in the North are doubly affected by religious and cultural factors, which I can say prevent them from speaking up. And if we don't engage every woman intentionally and adequately, our voices will never be heard. Their voices will never be heard. We see what happens. Three things I've been told affect women in politics. Money is an issue. We know that, you know, money is an issue. Violence is another issue. So we, we, you know, when, when we do not engage, when we do not think of creating an enabling environment for the woman as well, she is disenfranchised as well. So we, 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 we have to be deliberate in everything we're doing. We need to put agenda on everybody's agenda. We have to continue. We shouldn't be talking about um, how many, we shouldn't be talking about the woman's um, um, personal issues because she's not bringing her personal issues on board. She's bringing her competency on board. The political will is very important. It is very important that we have the twinning, like my honorable sister said, and then we have uh, the zebra um, system here. Twinning is very important. As you put five men down. Thank you so much for sharing down. your thoughts with us on that. Thank you, Tawun. Thank you. I will get back to the studio now and to Indicato, the executive director of the Nidari Foundation. You've had years of advocacy and you've been advocating and been very vocal in pushing for equal rights for women and girls. And do you think that when conversations around equal rights and opportunities come up, is a push is a push now back centered on factors that hinders women freedom and growth? Yes, um, many times when we hear about you know freedom for women, we start to see conversations about religion, about culture, and it's very easy. I, I think um, Senator Inaya in a previous um, in a previous um, panel pointed out that even in the Senate, once this is brought up, 
everybody just falls in line and shuts it down. And so we need to bring the conversation back to why this is necessary. And this necessity arises because, look, a nation cannot say it wants to grow when close to 50% of it have been disenfranchised. These people uh, do not have autonomy over themselves. They do not have equal rights. Equal rights and opportunities, not just for one group of people. It's for everybody. And that, look, data has been pointed in other countries. You point to Scandinavian countries that have achieved a certain level of equal rights and opportunities for women. And you see a better standard of living. And so it's, at this point, it's not about, you know, those little, little things or culture. Culture is not, is not an ancient thing. Culture is now. And culture actually arises from needs, from necessity. And so Nigeria must evolve. We can't continue to say for something that we cannot explain, we were doing things like this before and we want to continue. We are suffering, we're doing it. We, it, it, is not, it is not amounting to, to, to better um, standard of living for us, but we want to continue doing it. At this point, I would point that, look, you know, like enjoyment, you too. You don't want something better. And so for this, we should, we should reduce or we should discard those little things that we think, oh, we can't explain. We just feel that this is the way we should be doing things. And we should go towards the point of, look, this is what is necessary. This is what is fair, and we should do Fantastic. it. Fantastic. So let me go to Lois Alta. Uh, how do the provisions in the acts I earlier on read contribute to limiting Nigerian women as well as promoting violence against women? Both able women and women with disabilities. For women with disabilities, they are at zero level. From the federal to the local level, there is no woman with disability, either by elective positions or appointive positions. We really need to start collaborating. Look at what happened in Jigawa, Women came together and contributed one 1,000 each to buy a vehicle for pregnant women to be taken to the hospitals. Women that are listening to me right now, it is time that we vote woman to woman. It is time that you begin to think of strategies of how to ensure women inclusion in every sector. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lois, for that. And going by the statistics Lois gave and mm -hmm. other statistics that have been read right yes. from the minister's speech to what we've been looking at here, I must say that these statistics are really scary. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Nigerians understand what is at stake? Well, I, I think that a lot more sensitization needs to be done. And please, let me point out that Lois's statistics were in percentage when you see 6.4. Six uh, yes, six yes, yes. Because we'll be like, well, 6.4 women <laughs> were in percentage. And uh, what we need to do is a lot more sensitization. We need to sensitize. We need to educate. I've been saying that, please, all the conversations we are trying to have, we need to break it down like we're having it with fifth graders. I even use myself as an example. Sometimes when you bring aspects of the law at some point, I studied MassCom. Hopefully I studied law at some point. And you know, we, we, start getting tri like we start getting lost. And somebody can just come and point one thing and say, eh, so that our wives will not cook again. And everything you are saying, every important thing falls under that. Because everybody understands cook, food, the necessity of stomach, uh, food in your stomach, and why or who should provide for what. And so we need to break that conversation down to that level. I would also say, I mean, even for someone who speaks like this, engages on this level, that look, we need to bring this conversation down to the grassroots level. That a lot of times when we're talking about equal rights and opportunities, it's very elitist, and so people cannot follow up. And I wish I could break my pigeon very well to say, see, this thing, we need more women to get, you know, access to school, may them go to school. Made them feel provide for themselves so that they go carry food, put for table. It's that kind of talk we are saying. That CEO, if you say it, if, if our advocacy on TV is, if you, if you lift her, you're not going to need to suffer like this. Like, keep simplifying the message. You know how they show Panadol adverts? The man goes and he's breaking that sack and he's tired, and then they give him Panadol. You break into that because most people are seeing, you know, it's through all this heavy thing where they carry for head. Panadol go help me. It's the same way you show a man carrying weight that he's, he shouldn't be carrying alone. Everybody can join in in carrying it. And then somebody stops him and says, ah, Oga, you know, say if Madame goes to school, if you know they lock her money for inside room, if you know they talk, say, she know if you do like this, 
she feel contribute. That is the way people would understand. Also, in terms of this participation, in terms of a women's movement, let us also drop elitism. Because when you say femini feminism, feminists, or people who believe in equal rights and opportunity the most, you will not find it more than women at the rural areas. They have nothing to lose. Those of us at this level, self, I will say we are, we, are, we are women of convenience. That one day, you talk, talk, talk. If they say they will not buy you that Benz, you start to hmm, hmm, hmm. You even heard talks of people who, at the end of the day, cannot even vote for the Gender and Equal Opportunities Bill because they have people at home who will take over their seat. We have something to lose. Oh, my office, I may not be promoted if I say like this. But rural women, they go to markets. They make their own money. Nothing is holding their neck. Yes, they have several other situations. But you find out that in terms of willing to take a battle to the very end, it is rural women that will take it. So it's high time that we stop this, uh, our conversations here. We that are here, them, um, um, I, I think it's Fumi um, Kuti. Is it Fumi, um, Fumi Onikola for Kuti? You know, they, they leveled, they were able to do educated women. They moved. They moved with women at the grassroots. They moved with market women. And, and when Thank they were, so when, yes, when they were moving with them, they did not say we are here to save you. They say all of us, we are in this together. Let us go. And I think that is the best way we can achieve a critical mass for this movement. A group of women who know that Luko, if I tie my wrapper and I come out like this. This is the time that this battle, and they won't back down. Yes, look at the history you, of the Nigeria so women's struggle. And I want to use this point to say, look, when this struggle comes like this, it's not the struggle of Ashwebio. It's not the struggle of let us all wear this kind of wrapper and come out and say the time is now. No, no time for this kind of wrapper. When a battle comes to the forefront, it is something that, look, however it is, that those who can afford drugs should afford those who is jeans they want to wear should wear but it is that we are all coming up for one purpose and one message and everybody must be included thank you thank you so much for that i'm going back to tone for your last words so uh, thank you very much i'm just I was going to quickly pick up from what where Ndi um, ended. The rural and grassroots women are the ones who vote. We need to speak the language they understand. Why there should be more women in leadership positions where we should vote more women in. Toyo Siakirile said something. There's a place in hell for that woman, influential woman, who buys rappers for other women just to heal her. Going again by the um, Equal Opportunities Bill, she spoke about that uh, Senator Biodu Ulujimi from Ikite State sponsored. I think it was it was um, um, pu pushed, kicked out in 2016, and she represented it to the Senate in, in November 2019. Look, that bill says it all. It seeks to guarantee the rights of women to equal opportunities in employment, equal opportunities and in inheritance for both male and female, equal rights for women in marriage and divorce, equal access to education, property, land ownership and inheritance, protecting the rights of widows and all of those. And I'm saying that with a little success, Women Radio has made other media houses that are not focused primarily on women issues, they need to begin to understand the need to promote the rights of women and to understand that even within your local coverage, there are diverse women that need to be reached and adequate content provided for them. We need to put gender on national agenda. We need to put gender on everyone's agenda. We need to be deliberate. We need to be intentional. Thank you. Thank you, Tone. Uh, we now have Ono Ihoma. Sorry, we lost you at a point. Can we have your last words on that? 30 seconds, please. Okay, I was talking about having the principle of tourism in our constitution as we amend this constitution. I think this should be uh, our great opportunity to do this. And from the national to the local, once we have a male at the head, a female should be deputy. A female become a male should be deputizing so that we can have equal opportunities for both male and female. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. So we'll be rounding up with final words from Lois Alta. Lois, your final words. Yeah. The World Economic Forum report in 2020 states that 
women will take 95 years to achieve gender equality. But I want us to come up with strategies that will not take us 95 years, that wouldn't take us 100 years. We want to achieve gender equality in the next four years. We want to achieve the 50-50 um, agenda in ensuring that women get their rights, women with disabilities get their rights, persons with disabilities, and all the vulnerable groups. So my last word is, I want to see Nigeria achieve gender equality in the next four years.